biggest source of error if that's not taken carefully and you don't have a good measurement. Um, all the other errors uh, could be uh, relatively insignificant. Um, but other things that you should do are when you're suspending your loggers, you definitely want to use a uh, no stretch, uh, ideally stainless steel stranded wire. Uh, you don't want to use solid wire because after you pull the thing out and put it back in a few times, it tends to get kinked. The kinks tend to um, stretch over time, and that any stretch in the wire would be falsely interpreted as a change in water level. Uh, you also want to think about um, using a Teflon coated wire uh, if you care about the cleanliness of the well that you're in. Uh, generally, the emulsion gets lying around in the dirt. Um, Sometimes it's greasing around. Teflon coated wire is easy to wipe that grease off uh, and get it back, get it back into the well without contaminating the well. Um, and you definitely also need to be careful about uh, handling the logger. You don't want to uh, have it get banged around. They are pressure sensors, so they are sens very sensitive to shock. When you actually go to make that deployment and you're in the field, um, again, because there is this temperature effect in all pressure sensors, in an ideal world, you would lower your logger into the well and you'd let the, temp with the temperature of the groundwater. Uh, you would want to wait at least 10 minutes for that full stabilization to occur. Then you can take your reference measurement, knowing that any temperature effects have already usually happened prior to the beginning of your deployment. Um, another common pitfall is uh, make sure that you synchronize your PC clock. PC clocks in particular are totally notorious for drifting over time. Uh, use a, uh, a, a good standard. Make sure that if you've got more than one uh, computer in the field, you're using a data shuttle, you're using multiple loggers. They all need to be launched from that same time base. Uh, and Otherwise, it really leads to problems uh, down the road. Let's see. And, uh, and again, uh, when we talked about the deployment, um, you're going to make that reference measurement at the beginning. If you make one also at the end, it's very handy to check and find out if you did have drift. If either the sensor drifted or if your cable uh, so-called changed length or maybe somebody, if, you did, if there was more than one person with access to that well and they didn't put it back in the same way as you had it, you'd be able to essentially do a quick error check of your data with that uh, reference measurement at the beginning and the end. Once you get outside of wells uh, and start talking about deployments, streams, lakes, estuaries, channels, wetlands, aqueducts, tidal, docks, you name it, uh, you start to have to uh, be a little bit more ready to start improvising. Um, we typically would recommend building a filling well uh, in almost any of these applications out of uh, PVC, uh, most commonly Schedule 40. Um, and you, you're you going to definitely need to, you know, to, to do what it takes. Um, every application, it seems, is a little bit different. Um, the things that are that are in common with these types of things is, first of all, you need to have a good place to make your uh, manual uh, reference level. I could repeat this over and over again, but you, know, you, you need to have that spot where you know where your reference level is. That thing needs to be a place, uh, ideally, that's been surveyed in, but it needs to be something that's not going to move. Uh, if there is a flash flood or there's some unexpected event, uh, you don't want to have your reference get blown away, uh, if at all possible. Uh, and, and again, you do want to take these measurements at the beginning and end. The next slide here shows some examples of filling wells. Like I said, there are uh, almost as many sites as there are different ways of doing filling wells. The, uh, the middle photo uh, has a nice gauge um, that provides a handy reference uh, and it's a steel, a steel pipe, which is more um, durable would certainly be more durable than a PVC uh, type of setup. But something to keep in mind, uh, you know, is just that you have that thing be, you don't want to come back into the field after a, a long deployment and find out that a uh, boulder uh, smashed into your filling well 
for um, our vandals uh, decided they were going to have a shotgun target with it. Uh, so you just need to build it. You need to spend the time up front to make sure you've got a really good uh, setup. Just in the general deployment tips, whether you're on a stone well or a regular well, um, you really do want to um, log temperature um, for your for the most accurate uh, pressure. Because the pressure, uh, because the temperature is used in the pressure uh, compensation of your sensor, that's very useful. It's also nice to know what the water temperature is doing, as that does affect the density of the water. Uh, water, and that does make a uh, small but noticeable effect. Level calculation. Um, when you talk about deploying, or when you consider to, if you're using an absolute pressure sensor and you need to deploy a barometric pressure logger, uh, it's nice to, uh, it's a good idea to put that barometric logger in a place where the temperature doesn't vary that much uh, over time either. So if you are in a place where you have a well and you can get that below the ground surface uh, but above the water table. Uh, it's a good spot where the temperature doesn't vary very much, and that helps to um, improve your overall accuracy. So I think that's about it. Um, we're going to open this up to questions and, and discussion. And uh, looks like I've got quite a few questions here already that uh, we're going to try to uh, try to answer. Richard and I. Uh, the first question is. Are there special considerations for deploying a water level logger in shallow water, for example, a tidal estuary? Uh, this is a good question. Uh, why don't I start, Richard? Um, first thing that comes to mind uh, when I see tidal is that you do need to be concerned about corrosion. So depending on uh, how salty your water is, um, and that's a little bit of a judgment call, you may want to use a titanium logger. And you may want to be, you may need to be concerned about bio balance. That's right, Nick. You may have to uh, visit the site regularly to clean off the unit. Also, in, in shallow water, uh, you don't have to worry about orientation of the logger. And some people worry about holding it upright. Uh, the pressure trans, uh, you just need to make sure you, you tie it down in such a way it doesn't move and that it's uh, protected from damage. Uh, from, say, uh, if there's turf or anything in the area, it certainly needs to be well protected from uh, impact or shock, as you know. Another thing uh, just about uh, shallow water is that uh, the pressure sensors are not um, orientation sensitive. So in some instances where people have been uh, using our things in like tidal pools, they'd like to actually lay the logger down horizontally, um, and that's fine. It, the pressure sensor doesn't care if it's vertical or upside down or sideways. So if you're in very shallow water, that logger could be laid down horizontally. That's not a problem. Second question here. Um, how can I tell how small a water depth change I'll be able to see? Um, well, you know, we certainly have a resolution specification for the unit. That's basically driven by the A to D converter in the, that's in the unit. So that's the minimal change that the logger will be able to detect. But then there's a question of accuracy, and usually the accuracy is larger than uh, a number of bits. So you, you have to look at the specification and see how many bits of accuracy error there are. Uh, especially when if you're subtracting barometric uh, pressure from it. So you have to look at that total error that we talked about in the beginning of the talk. Uh, you will see changes, but uh, when you're subtracting logger pressure from barometric pressure, those changes could be uh, due to 